Okay, the next entity we'll be talking about is called a perineurioma. A perineurioma is comprised of perineural cells. So we talked about the outer sheath of the nerve fiber. And this a tumor is made up of those cells. It's usually a soft tissue tumor, but there are sclerosing variants that uh, also exist. So the soft tissue and the sclerosing variants are probably the most common variants of this neoplasm. It typically occurs in middle-aged adults, usually on the extremities or the torso. It's benign, presents as a painless mass. Um, and histologically, what you appreciate as you can see in this section, is what looks like a multinodular proliferation, as you can see. Because this is a soft tissue mass, we don't have any overlying epidermis or dermis, but these are fairly distinct nodules. And uh, typically, there's a condensation of fibrous tissue at the periphery of these individual nodules that um, is classic for perineuriomas. But when you look at the composite cells, they're usually spindled in nature. So there are these elongated, slender cells that kind of have wavy nuclei, or some people think try to think of them as comma-shaped or disc-shaped nuclei. And the way these cells are organized, they're usually organized into these whorls or these interwoven fascicles. That is a feature that is easier to appreciate on medium power. So I'm, I'm on high power just so you can appreciate the, the spindled nature of these cells and to pay attention to the nuclei to appreciate how slender they are, particularly when you look at them cut in longitudinal section. These disc shape or comma shaped nuclei are very characteristic. Okay. Now I'm going to go back out to medium power, and hopefully you can appreciate that these cells are kind of whirling together. And if you pay attention to areas where there are, so that's you can see there's a whorl of those cells here. And when you read in the textbooks, they'll talk about interwoven fascicles being fairly characteristic. But they also speak about perivascular whorls. So if you look at areas where we can try to see if we can find some blood vessels, you'll see some whirling around of cells around the blood vessel. And you can see that slit-shaped structure here is a blood vessel. And you can see how these cells kind of whirl around it. Same thing with these blood vessels. You kind of discern a bit of a whirling of those spindled cells around the blood vessel as very characteristic of a, of a uh, perineurioma. Now, usually the cells look very bland, so you're not going to see much in the way of mitotic activity. You won't see much in the way of uh, nuclear atypia. The stroma can vary quite a bit. In this case, most of what I've shown you, the stroma looks very loose. It looks very myxoid. Myxoid means mucinous, so it looks kind of mucinous. But the stroma can also be quite collagenous, too. And there's, there are examples that I'll show you that'll have more of that kind of dense collagenous stroma. And if you look here, you can see kind of that bright pink glassy collagenous stroma. And you have this densely cellular areas of the perineurial cells. So this is just another view showing how the stroma can differ quite a bit. These cells are usually EMA positive, and they're CD34 positive, but they're S100 negative. So that's important distinction from uh, neurofibroma or from uh, the schwannomas that we were talking about earlier. Um, in schwannomas, EMA just stains the outer um, layer uh, whereas in perineurioma, the cells are actually EMA positive because they are derived from perineurium. Okay, so this is a perineurioma. And I have the EMA stain just to show you what that stain looks like in this tumor. So this is the EMA stain, and it looks faint on low power. 
when you go on high power, you'll appreciate that the cells, those slender elongated cells, are EMA positive. And that's very characteristic of a perineurioma.